I think it's very interesting that you have uh, inf uh, information in three or four different places that bring you to Vancouver with some information about how things are going in other places. And I think that's very interesting to share that with us. <laughs> so Edmonton, Edmonton is one area that was of interest to me and, and to understand, or at least I think, you're coming back to Vancouver, you see it's a very nice place to be or is a better place to work, one or the other. <laughs> and probably is it just a nice place to be. A bit of both. <laughs> uh, our guest is Fiona Mitchell, and she's a radiation oncologist at BC Cancer, and she's been there for a, uh, a little while. And uh, she's been at experience, as I mentioned, at some other locations as well. And I'm sure she'll share that with us as she presents her, her, her talk today about um, uh, the uh, diagnostic tools that people use in diagnosing prostate cancer. Thank you, Fiona, for being with us. You're most welcome. Just to clarify, I'm not an oncologist. I'm a radiation therapist. So anybody who had radiation therapy, I would be the person that would have delivered it. But I'm the practice leader now. So not so much hands on. But I do want to just I don't well, want to oversell myself. I don't want to disappoint you when you're thinking you've got an oncologist here. But uh, 35 years in the biz. So I, I do have quite a lot of uh, knowledge on um, cancer. But what I want to do today is just to walk you through some of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, and feel free to interrupt or anything, but I'm going to try and share my screen because I'll speak to um, um, so hopefully you can see that. Yes. Okay, great. And then I'm just gonna. Okay, super. So I'll just uh, move you out the way. There we go. So I just wanted to uh, first introduce myself. I'm the practice leader for radiation therapy um, at BC Cancer, and um, I was previously with um, Cancer Care Alberta. Just I just came back last year, so I know a lot of what's happening in Western Canada um, on the radiation therapy front. Um, and some of this, I'm not. I don't know. I mean, I know you're all on the prostate cancer support, but I don't know how many of you have had radiation therapy or not. So, just gonna kind of give you a quick overview of so radiation therapy. So, about fifty percent of cancer patients actually get radiation therapy as part of their treatment, um, and radiation th therapy works by damaging cancer cells. Um, so, normal normal cells are actually able to repair, whereas cancer cells cannot, and that's why the treatments are split over um, a number of weeks into fractions because um, the healthy cells repair every day and the cancer cells don't so that's the the bonus and, and some of the advances in diagnostic imaging have enabled new techniques that provide better imaging of the target so now we can increase the radiation dose um, and cell kill tumor cell kill while minimizing the dose to the healthy tissues um, which minimizes the side effects which is important Here's a, an image of, um, so this is the sort of the before and after, to be honest. So this is when I first started in radiation therapy, way too many years ago to actually mention, but a long time now, it was before 1990. But uh, so we used to do a four fill box, we called it. And so this is the prostate here. And we used to treat from the front, from the back and the two sides, because that's got the... Um, the dose in and these are dose washes. So it actually shows you how much dose the healthy tissues are getting. So when the beam comes in from the side, it deposits a lot of energy and this all contributes. And the four beams all focused on the prostate give a lot of uh, a bigger dose to the prostate, which is the target area. Nowadays, because of the technology and all the imaging, we can actually, we do what we call rapid arc and everything's moving, the beam, the collimators and stuff. And what we can do is actually treat the prostate and the, you can see the beam is, um, sorry, the dose is a lot more contoured around the prostate. And then all this healthy tissue hardly gets any radiation at all, which is what we want to do. We want to minimize the dose to the healthy tissue while maximizing the dose to this. So we've come a long way. And a lot of the reasons is because of diagnostic imaging. So here's the basics. So we've got basic x-rays, mammography, CT, MRI, ultrasound, nuclear medicine, and then PET. So I just want to go through some of this and show you how it relates to prostate. So I thought we'll go back to the beginning because it's an interesting place to start. So in 1895 was the first time Röntgen found or x-rays, he discovered them effectively. So that's quite a few years ago now, obviously. Um, but interesting to note that MRI was 1946, which I found quite um, 
So the first MRI units, well, not the, the discovery, I should say, of MRI was then 11 years before ultrasound and 22 years before we started using CT. However, <laughs> we didn't get an MRI unit clinically available until 1973. Um, and actually, when I was a student in Edinburgh, I um, was one of the guinea pigs on the first MRI unit at the Western General. So um, I had no idea at that time that really that we'd put an MRI unit onto a linear accelerator 30 years on and uh, be able to do imaging. So it, it's uh, mind blowing what we can do now. So here's the first x-ray that was ever taken. And this would be a pretty much a standard x-ray of a hand now. Um, and you can see his, it was quite rudimentary and the, the big knuckle, that's his um, ring actually that's being shown up there. But look at the detail we can get now. I mean, it, it's incredible. You can see all the meta uh, carpals and everything in the hand. So it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's pretty magical um, what science has done and how many billions of people across the globe have been helped by diagnostic imaging. So radiation therapy is a bit of the background, not radiation, therapy, but radiation, a, a bit of science. So basically you take an electron, you speed it up and you hit it, a, hit a target and x-rays are produced. A lot of heat is produced, so they had to dissipate that, but that's really how an x-ray is produced. These x-rays are really superficial and wouldn't be able to treat an area such as the prostate, which lies deep in the pelvis. So what they had to do, science had to figure out ways to increase the energy. And lucky for us, if you speed up the electrons, so the linear accelerator, what we do in radiation therapy is we linearly accelerate the electrons in a vacuum and it goes to the speed of light and then it's bent around and it hits the target. Um, and so, so we can produce energy or x-rays of energy that can penetrate before it starts depositing its energy into you. So that's how the treatment works. I just thought this was a cool picture because look at all the, the images that we can see, lungs, brains, like knees. I mean, some of you might have had knee trouble. I certainly do. Um, and I'm very grateful for the ability to image. And you can actually see the ACL and all kinds of stuff nowadays. But some of the things, this was um, years ago, I, I was quite taken by this. Like, what an incredible example of a spiral fracture, um, not for the person, but for us being able to see it, it's quite uh, cool. And I've just got some other images of x-rays just to show you again. This is um, because gallstones are basically calcifications. They actually show up, whereas before we wouldn't have been able to see this. But because we have x-rays now, now it's still two dimensional at this point. But you can see and all this is the, the bowel and the air in the bowel, because that's how that shows up. Lungs, you've probably seen on any hospital show, they like to put up, you know, a picture. There's always a, a lung on the, the screen. So this just shows you, this is healthy lung because the radiation passes through. So it makes a darker image. And this is like um, infection in the lungs. So this is not good. This would be like a pneumonia or something like that. And here another is uh, whenever you get them, I don't know if you watch Chicago Med or whatever, but the collapsed lung. So a collapsed lung is this because there's basically no air in it. So and then here is a hyperinflated, it says, but basically it has. So you can see the contrast. So it shows it really nicely on x-rays. That's is why they use them in um, emergency all the time. Now, as we've kind of gone on, they've, um, we can use software to enhance the image and we can use the technology to our advantage. So here we've got a barium swallow. So this person is swallowing barium and you can see it going down and it the epiglottis comes over and it goes right down into the stomach. So they can actually, so if there was a blockage here, you would be able to see that. And again, we can actually, before we could just see the air in the um, intestine, but now you can actually see the outline because they've swallowed barium and it's not very pleasant, but it's an incredible tool to be able to image the intestine. So it, it's pretty cool. Again, here's the kidneys with a dye in it. So you can see the ureter um, and coming down in here. So there's a blockage here because this one you can see goes straight down to the bladder. And here, so they would require further investigation. And this was just an interesting use of scissors. I thought this was kind of um, a bit bizarre, actually, but um, I don't have a story behind it. And it wasn't an x-ray I had anything to do with, but I did find it. And I thought, oh, well, there you go. Um, this blew my mind, coronary angiogram. Look at what in the B is what they got all those years ago. And at, that, at the time, it was probably fabulous like to actually see it. But now look at what they can do. They can see the arteries. You can see it pumping. You can see the heart. You, like it's, it's unbelievable what we can actually um, 
image now and that's the whole point of diagnostic imaging is to be able to see inside the body and do the diagnosis so it's a very serious subject but i do like to add a little bit of levity into it so um so obviously he's got an advanced case of water on the knee and it's a bit corny but i thought it was quite funny <laughs> So mammography, another um, advances in di diagnostic imaging is the um, imaging of the breast. And you all have um, mothers, daughters, wives, whatever. So I thought this was worth including. Um, interesting enough, not all lesions in the breast are cancer. And when ladies go for the mammography and they get the call, we've seen something, everybody goes, oh, no. But actually, like most of the lesions we see are not actually cancer. And here's just a handful of things they can be. It can be. Um, dystrophic, skin calcification. It can be all kinds of things, which luckily for us, they pick up and then they can say, no, it's not. Unfortunately, there are lots of ones that are cancer. And this would be an example right here. Um, and I just want to show you, I don't know if you can see, hopefully on the screen, I don't know how big your screens are, but so the, there's the cancer, but you can see the there's prongs coming out of it. It's kind of like legs of a crab. And that's why they call it cancer because that's how it spreads along. Um, so cancer is, um, crab so that's you can kind of see it quite nicely in that image there i just thought that was interesting too oh, another corny one this reminds me i need to get my mammogram and you gentlemen won't appreciate that but i know there's a lady on the call too and and you do have uh, mothers etc so ct scan um all ct scan is is an x-ray on a um gantry and it spins around you so what we actually can do is do create a 3d image with c with software so it takes the image and converts it so we can now see three-dimensionally so basically we can see inside you and we can reconstruct what you look like inside which is a game changer when we're talking about radiation therapy because we want to be able to point the beam and miss a lot of the structures and now we can see them in 3d it makes a big difference Diagnostically, we use it for all kinds of different things, but radiation therapy, we use it as a, for the treatment planning. Whenever you come in, a patient will get a CT scan um, in the treatment position. So for, for you, for the gentleman with prostate cancer, it's lying on your back with um, like your a pillow under your knees and something to support your ankles and, and your head. So, but here's a, a lot of things. So when CT scans came on board, there was a change diagnostic again, because now we can see three dimensionally inside people. And here's just some, some examples. So it's basically a slice across through the kidney. So you can see there's the liver, you can see the kidneys. Um, it just, this one's maybe a better one because you can, it's actually marked out what everything is. So you look up from the, the feet. So there's the right, there's the left and the posterior. And it, it does show you quite a lot internally. There's the ribs, if you can see. There's your spleen, kidney, liver, etc. And the left kidney is um, higher than the right. So we learned a lot when we did that. I mean, they learned a lot from cadavers, but now we can actually, we don't have to cut people apart to learn more. And this one, uh, again, using barium, they can actually outline the stomach. So they've swallowed some barium and you can see the barium in the stomach up, up around here. But this is unfortunately advanced cancer of the stomach. Um, the other thing is we can cut in all different ways. So not just sideways, but you can cut longitudinally, surgically. And so you can actually see looking at the person. So this is a different view. And again, that really helps when we're doing radiation therapy because we can have a good look. We can sort of look all across the body and, and round and um, we outline um, the different structures. Uh, I just this I thought was interesting as well. Here's a stroke. So there's different kinds of stroke and they show up differently on um, CT scans. But again, because it's three dimensional. So this one shows up dark and light. And so diagnostically, it's really important because then the doctor can tell what kind of. So whenever like if you've had a stroke, they'll send you for a CT scan. And this is why, because they want to see what kind it is. And here this is. Um, somebody's hit their head and they've got a brain bleed so or something's happened some kind of trauma and there's the blood sitting under you can see not that clearly but you can see the so ct is good but it's not that good however when it comes to prostate cancer it's really important that we delineate um so we would take your ct 
take this information and then we outline the important structures. So there's the prostate, obviously. Here's the rectum, which lies directly behind. Um, and that's an organ of risk and very sensitive to radiation. And there's the bladder. So we want to make sure we can see all these. And we do this in every slice. It's every um, couple of millimeters. And then we map out the, the fields related to that. So you can see on this, there's the rectum, the seminal vesicle and stuff. So it's not that clear here, but when you start outlining everyone and it takes experience and stuff to do this, but this is what we do as radiation therapists. We'll go through and outline every structure so we can actually um, focus the dose to the prostate. Another thing, here's another um, CT has um, opened the door for. So there's, um, according to this prostate cancer. Now I wouldn't know that because I'm not a doctor, but um a radiologist would pick up on that very quickly. This is a bone metastasis, unfortunately, which shows up really clearly. And this, again, it would have to be the trained eye, but there's a node um, here, which is um, unfortunately a metastasis from the prostate. So we can see a lot more, as I say, but this is what we do. So having outlined all the structures in every uh, segment that we've taken, or slice, I should say, then they reconstruct it so we can see. So there's the bladder, there's the prostate, and there's the rectum. So you can see three-dimensionally, and actually we can rotate this person, this image of the person around, um, and it really helps when you're looking at the dose. Because um, before, as I said, we used to do four fields, front, back, and side, and side. Now we're actually able to paint the dose around it, and I think my next. And this shows you kind of how they've done that. So there's this is where the radiation goes. And this is where, so the rectum hardly gets any dose there. So this is the, there's the bladder gets a little bit and you can't avoid that because you have to have a little bit of a margin. Um, small bowel doesn't get any, which is good. So this would be like minimize the side effects for the gentleman, which is really important. So this is what a plan looks like. And this is why diagnostic imaging is so important. We don't diagnose using um because that's not what we're about. You're already being diagnosed. So we take the, the CT scan in the treatment position, and this is what we use to make our uh, beam. So that's one slice, and there's the hips. There's the prostate lying right in the middle. And as I said, the blue area hardly gets any dose at all. Then the green gets a little bit more, but the red, you can see, we managed to get them a lot of dose in while minimizing the dose. There's the rectum, and it's sitting well and truly in the blue area, which is really good. This is just different images on the sea. And the little little green man here shows you the what the patient's position is. So supine is lying on the back. And then this is looking from the feet up. And it, so hips are important as well. So there's we've had to outline the hip. There's the bladder. And again, you can see the dose wash across all these areas. So we have a good look. And then they try and so the 95% just around the prostate. Is this making sense? Is this jump in if you have any questions, please? I, I have no problem stopping. Another little bit of a corny joke, but uh, the Mayo Clinic is one of the uh, not famous ones, but the famous ones, I guess. Of... <laughs> um, so now back to MRI. So MRI, uh, we talked about earlier, and this MRI actually uses magnets and the properties of water to get the images. So we can actually now get soft tissue dish, um, delineation, which is, is quite important. So when we saw the first image of the prostate for the CT, you could see it wasn't that clear. And I said, you have to be quite um, experienced in it to be able to get the prostate, the bladder and the rectum. Well, with MRI, we use it a lot, obviously, in diagnostic imaging. If anybody's had a sore knee, shoulder tear, whatever, there we use it for, well, there's a ton of stuff. Um, there's all those kinds of things and you know people go for it get a full body MRI because it isn't radiation as well that's the other thing because it's magnets it's I'm gonna say safer but it's it's um there's still issues like if you go in there's always horror stories is the cleaners going in with the cleaner for the floor the big and it's such a strong magnet it'll take it and um pull it up to the magnet and if you're in between that uh, you can get severely hurt so anyhow there's the what they use it for and here's some higher than normal cold volumes resulting in longer wait times. Oh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, be with you as soon as possible. It's good. Other people can you mute yourself? That would might be helpful. Here's um, and this just I wanted to show you how um 
impressive it is. Like, look at the soft tissue. You can see the sulci of the brain. Here's the shoulder. You can see the muscles in the spine. You can see the vertebrae in between and the knee. Before, it was lovely to see the knee. You can see the patella and the femur and the tibia. But now, look, you can actually see the muscle definition and stuff. It's, it, it really is mind blowing. And I get quite excited about this stuff, even though diagnostic imaging is not my field. Radiation therapy is. But using this information has change the way we do radiation therapy um, completely. I thought this was interesting too, just Alzheimer's and how you can actually visualize Alzheimer's using, and uh, for any of us who are getting older, as we all are, this is an important, um, it, it also has enabled us to um, identify Alzheimer's earlier, so get people on treatment, though there isn't a cure, but it has been able to slow it down. For you, this is again, here's that bladder and uh, outline that we had before but look you can see it so much clearer now using the MRI because it's all soft tissue but it's really clearly delineated so this is a T1 um, for a prostate and then again we have um, this is a side view but same you can even see the seminal vesicles here which are important uh, there's the prostate the rectum and the lobes in the prostate and there's the penis coming out from there so this translates so you can actually see on the CT, now this has got a dose wash on it or a, a contour, so it's a bit more um, obvious, but it wouldn't have been as obvious. There's a pubic bone. The pubic bone obviously shows up really nicely on both. So here's a healthy prostate um, on an MRI, and then here's one with uh, cancer, unfortunately. So that little bit there. So again, there's the rectum and the bladder just sits up above. But the this, the detail is, um, is the devil's in the detail, as they say. Um, so that's really important for us. And for us to be able to see that, now we can actually shape the beam. And we brought our margins in a lot more because we can actually see. So we don't have to assume um, which actually has, um, again, reduced the side effects. Um, and any of you have had uh, radiation therapy treatment, you'll probably relate to this because we insisted on you drinking two or three glasses of water beforehand. So you would have a full bladder. Um, so I thought this was, it's only funny now that if you're not going through treatment, when you're going through treatment, it's not fun at all. And we always uh, felt for everybody who had to go through that. Now, ultrasound, ultrasound is just sound waves um, and they use that to image. And mostly people talk know about it for pregnancy, but there's um, there's other stuff you can use it for, um, gallbladder, pancreas. And we actually do use it in radiation therapy for prostate cancer um, when we're, we're doing brachytherapy, but I'll talk about that in a bit of a minute. Again, computer software has changed. So this would be a two dimensional one that, you know, people used to get years ago. And now, crikey, you can almost see, oh, this baby looks like daddy, you know, type thing with the, which is pretty um, incredible and, and I think cool, but uh, way beyond anything. When I trained, we did, I had to do some time in ultrasound. It was very early and it's, uh, and the only thing I really did enjoy because I could see was the babies, but um, other stuff now, and it's, it's way more uh, visual. Here you can do um, some mammography, breast mammography, obviously. So after you've had a mammogram, sorry, they often send you for uh, ultrasound if they see something suspicious because um, that will show up. Um, aortic dissection, this is pretty cool. So here's the aorta and there's the, the flap of the dissection. So I think that's, well, I'm going to say pretty clear. It's not really pretty clear, but it is now that arrows are on and there's the shadow of the spine. So it shows you things differently. It's just another way of imaging, which is... Um, different I, I kind of like this one poly well, like is not the right word but polycystic kidneys when I was a student I had to go to an autopsy and the patient had polycystic kidneys and so I've seen this in real life and this really is incredible that you could image that so had I been suffering from it I probably could have got it sorted before but here's what it lo would look like on the ultrasound and that shows up because all those cysts are full of fluid unfortunately it's not very pleasant for the patient this is um an ultrasound probe in the rectum so you can actually visualize so we can use the body's own anatomy to our advantage when we're visualizing and diagnostic imaging and we use this to when we're doing a brachytherapy for the prostate where they take radioactive seeds and you probably know about this so I'm sorry if I'm, I'm going over stuff you already know but and they put that directly into the prostate rather than irradiating from external and it's a very 
good treatment and it works for some people and also it's a good one if somebody is from way up north uh, they can come down and it, it means they don't have to come and stay in Vancouver for six weeks for example for treatment so we can image the prostate using ultrasound as well and again with the software enhancements here you can actually see the vascularity of the tumor um, which shows you gives it more even more detail to the radiation oncologist when they're planning um, and there's the subtle lesions in the gray so it just shows you a little bit more again um, computers are fabulous and, and here's the surgeon trying to decide what to wear in the morning again a bit corny but sorry <laughs> I like them all so the last one not the last one but the second last is nuclear medicine so nuclear medicine is where we take radionuclides and put them introduce them into the body um, and use them to image. So bone scans are the, probably the most common, um, but we also do use uh, nuclear medicine to treat cancer. We use it to treat thyroid cancer because iodine 131, so iodine is preferentially absorbed by the thyroid um, when it's in the body. And so we'll, they use that um, and put the iodine 131, which is radioactive and it gets absorbed by the thyroid and will kill the tumor cells. Um, again, just a little, little general knowledge, a little piece, but they, um, we can use it for all kinds of things. Cardiac um, is incredible. You can see the blood flow and everything through the, um, and stress test. Anybody who's had trouble with their um, heart is will be very grateful for the nuclear medicine diagnostics. And here's a bone scan. It just shows you I was always I had to as well work in nuclear medicine when I was a student. And I was fascinated by this because I hadn't actually seen, a, you know, a, a real life skeleton, but it actually pulls in the so I think the next picture is a better one um, in the bladder. So you can see and I was like, oh, look, there's a big lesion. But no, that's just the, it being expelled from the body. So it's just waiting to be peed out, basically. But there's cancer. This person, unfortunately, has a lot of cancer. But you see the kidneys. So they're in the ribs, in the spine, in the scapula, and I think in the hip there, which is um, which is unfortunate for this poor person. Um, but it is a great way of actually visualizing. And then you can actually go ahead and treat it. Again, ear, nose, and throat, and that's anyway. The grandchildren will probably get that more because that silly song, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And this is one of the latest um, inventions we've got: PET scan, which is positron emission therapy. And here we can actually trace. Um, we put the tracer in the body, and it goes to areas of most activity, which is usually where the tumor is. So the tumor is growing and multiplying, and so we can actually see. Um, so it is a type of nuclear medicine. We've got, I think, I believe two. BC unfortunately is way behind on their PET scanners, but I think we have like four in the province. I think Quebec has like ten or twelve. It's so you can go on to um, Kai, uh, Oh, there's websites that tell you, but and we are very far behind, unfortunately, but we do have a few. We certainly have two in Vancouver Centre, one at UBC I know of, and I think they might have one at Children's Hospital. And we used to use it um, just for uh, initially just for clinical trials, but now they're using it for more and more. But it will I identify and just. Um, this is what they use it for in di for diagnosis, but we actually use it in uh, radiation therapy. So. Years ago, when we were on limited by our imaging, so for head and neck cancer, I might treat just the area that was being treated or where the tumor was. Now with PET scan, we might have a node in the groin or something somewhere else in the body. So we would actually treat that at the same time, which, but before we never had that, we didn't know about it, so we couldn't treat it. So it um, again is fabulous game changer for us in radiation therapy. Cardiac, you can watch, um, hot spots and stuff and areas of activities it's um but this is probably more interesting this is um so there's the metastasis it lights up um and again it has to come out the body but there's the lesion they also use pet scan for alzheimer's again which is um so there's your normal brain and there's an alzheimer brain and uh, like we they couldn't see this before so um for the people in this kind of business or the seniors business, it's very game changing. And you can see the brain is totally different, but they would only have found that out after, obviously, on autopsy. But now we can actually look in. So here, this is another thing. So we can actually, just like I was talking about before, we can actually see a handful of cells before it, before it becomes a lump or anything. So we can put it in and actually, so this we can actually probably catch the tumor before it becomes an issue. So this is a, a prostate early 
potential for early diagnosis so and staging so if we if you go for a pet scan for something else and it shows up or you get a pet scan early on it actually the staging is better so the the treatment options they're not better but they're different from before because we know more anytime we the more we know the easier it is the better it is to treat and again here is a cancer node that is showing up which we probably couldn't see before on remember i showed you on the ct and i said you have to really know what to look for so it would be an enlarged nose well here it's really obvious to the, the plain eye uh, the kidneys just that's it's just excreting and same with that but there's the the node that um, would never have shown up before which um, again is game changing another corner well, on anybody who's got a dog can <laughs> relate to that um and I just want to show you the difference. So because I've been talking about diagnostic imaging and the, the way it's changed, the way we do things, unfortunately, this doesn't have to do with prostate, but just to show you. So look at the detail of MRI, CT. I should have had it you know, going from. But this, when I first started, this is amazing to be able to see this. Um, and now we can actually see this detail on our treatment units because we have x-ray units mounted to the treatment unit so we can actually do a CT scan and that's what I, any of you that have had treatment they would do a scan before you start treatment and then we, we move you left a bit right a bit you're unaware of it but we're using the images that we we'll get to make sure that you are full and you're in the right position and it's millimeters we're moving and also that your bladder is full I don't know if any of you had to stop treatment and get off the um the couch because your bladder wasn't full enough but we could actually see how full your bladder is and we need it to be a certain the same fullness as it was when you had your ct for us to go ahead because that's what the planning was done with just a summary of um so ct sometimes call, people call it cat it's less expensive so there is a hierarchy so you start x-ray <laughs> then you would go with uh, maybe ultrasound um, and then you build up so a CT scan is less expensive than an MRI, it takes less time. You can be in and out of CT in a half an hour. An MRI would probably take more now. And then the PET scan is over and above that again. So um, economics do play into this, unfortunately, because it wouldn't be great for us all to get all these um, uh, diagnostic tests right up front. But there is some economics. So there, the medical system is designed that we start with the lowest and then we, we move up to get more and more detail. Um, unless but now CT is kind of like if I hurt my knee they'll, the first thing they'll do is do uh, x-ray and then when they see the x-ray then they might send me for a CT scan or an MRI depending on what they see and again this is just to show the difference look this is a CT which we thought was fabulous because you can actually see this and I'm dating myself again but now MRI look it's it's incredible the detail you can see you can almost like well, it, it speaks for itself, basically. I don't need to tell you. And then again, the PET scan. So this was the CT. So there's the nodes, but very clearly they've shown up here. Um, and again, unfortunately, it's metastasis. And even better, we can actually overlay the technologies now. And this is what we do a lot in radiation therapy. So if you've had, a, you get your CT and maybe you've had an MRI previously. So we'll get that information and we'll um, over put it on top so when we're doing the planning we get even more information so here's areas of concern um, and then there's a pet on an MRI so again you probably would have picked up on this but it's it really just is double and triple confirmation so it's really um, I'm excited and goodness knows where technology is going to take us in the years to come but it really has helped us when we're treating because now we can really paint the, the dose to exactly where it needs to be minimizing the side effects which is lovely for any patient and uh, maximizing the tumor kill which is what we're all about so there you go i hope i've watched you through some of the behind the scenes in the world of imaging which all happens um you go in for the tests and stuff but not always do you know what happens when and what we do with that stuff um and i do think uh diagnostic imaging is uh a mind-blowing profession to have been involved in even though I'm on the therapy side but we've used all the tools and we still use them now as I say we've attached an MRI unit to a LINAC so we can actually image on the fly like just it, it's incredible and Cologne has got uh, in Vancouver are getting new machines where we'll be doing that and we call it adaptive uh, planning so we're actually planning um, we're adjusting the beam when you're to the to the day of the treatment it's, it's really really very cool um, um, and there you go.
So all done. What questions do you have?